Yeah, it should be. So there is in fact two goals. Uh, first is to be able to detect inconsistency between two data sets. And the other goal um, is the ability to train a model on a small area and then to predict on a larger one. So in fact there is two goals and you can use one or the other. I will maybe just wait for one, one single minute to, to let them come. So uh, the first goal uh, is um, with a detected inconsistency is the ability with an imagery and with something else to spot if there is inconsistency tile by tile between the two. And the other one, you train a model on a small area with accurate labels and on the model is trained it on a wide area with similar imagery and landscape and you predict at scale. That's the two kind of thing we can achieve with this kind of tool. And I, I go on. So uh, what kind of solution do you use? We use Robosat.pink. Um, it's a computer vision framework dedicated to geospatial imagery. And uh, its aim is to perform three kind of um, features, data quality analysis, change detection, and feature attraction. Uh, one thing, pings matter. Uh, pings matter because there is in fact two projects, Robosat and Robosat.pink. Uh, if uh, you want to have uh, any further information about the why and the how and, the, uh, and so on, there is a link with a description related to, uh, to that. Um, how does it work in, in concept? First, um, you have to train a model, it's a supervised model, supervised training. So here your model uh, has to be trained with label from an imagery. And it's trained with a loss function dedicated to extract meaningful information from the difference between these two data sets. So once you've trained this model enough, you can only use your imagery with a trained model and predict something related to the kind of label you train your model with. So if you train with buildings, you've got buildings. If you train with forest, you've got forest, and so on. And the point here is to also to compare your prediction with something else. And something else could be, for instance, OpenStreetMap vector data, or something else. Um, and uh, since you go, you've got uh, this, um, um, this, uh, this process, you're able to train a model and to compare with alternate data set. Um, what kind of imagery are we able to handle? Um, raster, coverage, uh, web services um, in input, and uh, related to, um, to vector, it could be OSM, uh, protobuf, postgis, georgison. So the only point is to, be, to have an imagery readable by GDOL and georeference, and here a vector. That's it. And since you've got that in input, you're able to train your model and to generate mass prediction. And once you've got mass prediction, you're able to compare them to Spotify differences area and so to extract vector from your mask. So that's the whole process. What kind of information can we spot in the output? Uh, here we configure the mask to be um, uh, in pink. And so, uh, automatically, the label will be configured to be in green because it's uh, the complementary color. So if you superpose pink and green, it became gray. So if you, here it's pink, it means that only the model detects something. If it's only here in green, it means that only the information is provided by the label. And here it's because it's beneath a tree. So uh, the aerial information can convey any meaningful information about that. And if it's in gray, it means that both agree. And so um, mask and prediction, uh, sorry, mask and labels are agree. You should be on time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how does it work? Uh, it works uh, by small command lines, uh, um, so you don't have the need to program in Python. If you want, you can, 
but it's not mandatory. And you can launch it only with small command lines, uh, tools. Um, somehow it's a bit like GDAL. If you already use something like GDAL on the command line, it's really the same kind of uh, small tools you can chain together to pick only the ones you need for a dedicated um, process. Um, how can we play with? There is a, a tutorial, one on one, uh, and with the tutorial you can, in only three, four hours, uh, launch all the steps with an imagery, a training, and prediction, and a compare. So if we look up online on the 101, what we do here, uh, we configure uh, the, the whole stuff, so it's only a few lines of configuration file. We retrieve an imagery, it's the one in Tanzania um, was been um, um, built up by drone uh, um, last year. Uh, we tile the, all the, um, the, um, the imagery on this area and also on this also area. It's provided by the imagery. And so here, up, it's um, tiled at the zoom level. Um, it's um, 11 with retina tiles. So it means that uh, it's double size um, tiles. It's really slow about the connection, so um, maybe I have to, to go in another place where it's already uncached. Yep, here. So, the imagery. Once we've got the imagery, we retrieve Jerusalem label and we process them with only one, uh, one single line to grab the labels. Once we've done that, we can create a data set, train the model, and thereafter, predict, retrieve a, um, a new imagery from another place, tile it again, retrieve the official OpenStreetMap data on this new area, and we create the prediction from the train model. And so, once we've done that, we can thereafter compare the both. So, by comparing the both, we can have something who look like that. And on all the places where we launch the prediction on the new imagery and with the official OpenStreetMap data, we can spotify the differences between the two. And each time you've got here a pink square, it means that there is a meaningful differences between the two data sets. The one who came from the trained model and the one who came from the official OpenStreetMap data. And you just have to zoom on the place where there is pink square and you uh, get um, this kind of prediction. And uh, because it's only in pink, it means that it's not present on the official OpenStreetMap data at this moment. It could, it could be because um, there is no feature or because they are not labeled as building. So sometimes uh, they are really on, um, uh, on the data set, but not uh, rightly uh, flagged uh, on the attribute um, part. So it's really a time saver um, as a tool to help to Spotify uh, and to pick up only um, the, um, the places where there is inconsistency and don't, you don't have the need to, to zoom and to, to care about other kind of data. Okay, so uh, it's easy to deploy. It's just a single line, pip3, install robots at pink, and everything come with it. That's it. Um, so all you need is imagery, GPU, um, few skills, and labels. So as imagery, anything readable by GDAL. As a GPU, at least eight giga um, RAM from NVIDIA. And it works in collab. Um, as initial skill, um, at the very least, geospatial data and command line fluency. That's all. And, and or but, uh, the key point is the labels. Um, because uh, there is um, a lack of um, uh, open data set uh, available, um, and uh, um, there is um, uh, several um, initiatives to list them to list all the um, open data sets uh, related to geospatial. Um, but because the labels is a very expensive task, um, we are lack of accurate enough labels. Uh, why I say that? Because here it's an aerial imagery. So if you took uh, OpenStreetMap footprints, 
uh, it's a good start. It will um, perform some, some good results, but it will be really different if it roof prints because it's a higher imagery. And a few pixels could make such a difference at the end. So it's not because you have already all the features labeled that it will be a good enough a training data set if you want really high accurate um, quality. So using this is enough for detec uh, change detection. But it's not enough if you want to directly extract the feature in one path. Um, the, the key concept is garbage in, garbage out. If you have a low quality labels in input, you will have low quality uh, mask prediction in output. Um, what could be an ideal open data set? Uh, it will be open data compliant. It will um, convey a lot of landscape from worldwide, um, being a big um, resolution tile, and mixed bands, resolution, and sensor imagery, um, and obviously convey several kinds of labels, building, roads, vegetation, and so on, with pixel accuracy. Uh, I insist on that. Uh, if you have a line related to, um, to a road, it's not enough. You, we must have the surface of the road to be able to um, perform well with this kind of, um, 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 of approach. Um, last year, um, there was um, a talk about that uh, in Milan, and no significant progress has been made on these release um, uh, topics uh, since last year. So today, uh, there is um, a discussion uh, at uh, 3 o'clock in uh, Kleiner Hall. So if you are interested in uh, how we can um, create an idle open data set, um, or at least to, inc to improve uh, the, the open data set stuff um, with um, OpenStreetMap initiative, uh, thanks to COM. Um, Right now, what can we do if we don't, if we don't have uh, an idle open data set? We can um, do it uh, in, two, in two paths. So there is another tutorial um, who help you to create a better data set, even if the first one uh, is not perfect. So what, when, uh, what do we do? We retrieve an imagery from um, Open Data. It's a city in France. It's called Lyon. And we retrieve from the official uh, um, city metropole uh, the imagery. Um, we retrieve also the official roof print um, attribute from, from the city. Um, we create um, uh, a training data set. We train it. We pre predict. And then we compare. And that is interesting in the compare that there is a lot of places where here you can spot that there is an inconsistency and it looks like um, here there is missing maps in the official um, open data from, from the city. So what will we do uh, is to uh, retrieve only the ones where there is a significant difference and it's something like 10% of the whole um, tile data set, and create with this small tool a way to compare them. And when it's something related to the model, because we train it only with few epochs, so really quickly, we keep it. But when it's related to a missing maps in uh, the official data, we select it to be able to remove these uh, tiles from the training data set for f further training, and we can do it really quickly. So um, because we reduce um, the, the amount of tile to check by factor 10, and because this tool uh, allow you to really make quick decision. So at the end, we just copy the tool we select to the clipboard, and that's it. So it helps us to really quickly make a good decision to uh, extract the only kind of Thanks. Uh, the only kind of tile we want, and so to improve uh, the data set to train. Uh, and so at the end, with uh, um, a pure open data um, um, data set, we can improve it and get better results than official open data set um, convey. Up. So um, robust ping is also interesting because it's uh, 
um, it uses um, um, state of art computer vision uh, loss function. Uh, there is data augmentation, uh, and it's also something you can uh, extend by design. So it's a plugin. Uh, mechanism. So, if, for example, if you want to change a metric, change a model, um, you can plug it and that's it. Um, the stack is a design about a Phosphor-G um, um, stack. There is a, a computer vision and a deep learning um, component. It's open source. Um, and because it's open source, there is um, several um, uh, subject we already identified to be um, improved. So if you want to participate, you're very welcome to send a pull request or to found uh, some, um, uh, some subject if you want to make it improve again. Um, as a performance matrix, um, so one megapixel is related to s um, 16 tiles or four retina tiles, and there is here some metrics related to the performances we can already achieve. Uh, on here, a low-cost um, GPU server. Um, it scales, so if you want to train it faster, you just have to add more GPU. If you want to tile it faster, you have to add more CPU. Uh, and if you want to predict faster, you can use an external dedicated inference high-performance system uh, and export the model uh, in um, uh, NNX format. Um, how to use that with a cost-effective approach? Uh, if you want your own server, it could be used only by GPU and CPU uh, cost-effective approach uh, with um, something not that expensive. And if you want to use it on the cloud, um, you can also. So it's something affordable even with um, cost-effective approach. And why performance matter? Because um, for yourself, when uh, it's something uh, you, uh, going fast, you can learn. You can change uh, some parameters and learn um, from uh, your last experience and improve it. Uh, obviously, it's um, a time and money saver. And also, it saves computation time and so help to reduce um, the carbon um, cost of the whole stuff. Um, so why using deep learning for mapping? So it's an easy to spotify um, um, at scale inconsistency between two data sets. Uh, and if you provide good labels on imagery, you can infer on a large scale um, similar new imagery. Um, why using your at pink? Because there is a, um, quite an integration with all the OpenStreetMap um, ecosystem. Uh, the web UI I show you is integrated with all the commands, so you have nothing to do in more. Um, it's high performance, it's easy to deploy, uh, compliant to the standard. Uh, it can also handle multi-bands imagery and uh, data fusion. It's accurate, it's accessible by design, and it's open source. Um, it's provided by DataPink. And as a takeaway, um, the, the message is to say that you already have an industrial solution to perform such a thing. Um, the performance is already okay uh, to use it for, for instance, a region, a small country, um, even on, two, um, on a cheap um, GPU server. And it scales, obviously, if you provide better hardware. So you can uh, use it on something bigger if you provide the right infrastructure. Um, there is no need anymore to be a computer vision expert to, to play with. Uh, you only have to, um, to be able to, to understand uh, your data uh, and what you want to, to achieve with. Uh, plain open data can be used to train a model even if it's a bit longer. And um, what will be a game changer, I said it again, it will um, the ability to have a pixel accurate labeling training open data set. Um, that will change everything. So um, for those we are interested in, uh, there is a, a discussion at three. Thanks. Thanks, Oliver, for an enlightening session. Uh, if everybody, anybody else needs to talk to him further, I think he'll be in the foyer in the breakout sessions. Now, I think we can take a few questions just for five minutes. Okay.
What about transfer learning? Are there any pre-trained models available? Um, this, um, um, about the model, it's a unit-like with a ResNet 50 as an encoder. And by default, um, it's already trained on ImageNet. So by default, it's already a fine-tuning uh, system. You can, by, on the configuration file, choose to um, suppress the pre-trained uh, stuff and uh, train it from scratch if you want. So it's, uh, it's open. And if you want to bring your own model, I said it's um, uh, extensible by design. So you just put your own model in the model directory and call it by his name from the configuration file. And that's it. So you have a total. Um, um, you can do what you want uh, about this point. Yeah. So uh, I understand that it's pixel-wise yeah. predictions, but do you do anything with uh, node data? With sorry, I didn't heard. Node. So single points as opposed to outlines. I'm not sure to understand. Well, a building could be labeled as an outline, or it could be labeled as a single dot. Oh, yeah. Uh, in fact, here, um, we classify each pixel. Yes. So each pixel, um, it will be, in fact, for instance, here, a building, no buildings. Or it could be a forest, no forest, and so on. Uh, so if um, what you have in your label is only single dots, uh, it will be really hard to, to make it uh, understand what you, what you want. So it will really um, be um, something um, work already with surface, so with, um, um, with polygons. Uh, with linear, it will be harder because the topology itself uh, means, and so it will be really harder if it's only single lines. Mm. Uh, and uh, with dots, um, it, it's not, um, it will be even harder because it's only small dots on the, on the ground. Hi. Um, great work. <laughs> great work. Open source models, I love them. Um, I, wanted to, I, I like the idea of having a tool to assess the quality of the, label, of the labeling in the training set. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was thinking, why can't you already automate the uh, classification of the tiles as good or, uh, as if they're good or not? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, if, as the examples you were showing, they were pretty obvious. There was a prediction and no label on top of it, so mm -hmm. you can already discard that automatically. Um, in fact, the point is, um, um, if we look to all the labels uh, where there is uh, inconsistency at first, it could be either because there is a lack of the labels, or it could be because the model um, is not able, at this point, to classify it well. For instance, something uh, a bit tricky, uh, it didn't see it enough, uh, and if you uh, train it only on few epochs, at this moment is not already in a, in able to, tr um, to classify it well. So it's, it's the reason because um, a human could make a better decision, but we um, won't bother a human to make a decision on the whole data set, but only on the few where there is a doubt. So that, that's the approach. Say so what was recall then? In, in, because I mean, you can say you look at recall, so you can look at how many buildings you lose on average per image. So you, you, have, you can have an idea of how much you're losing. You know what I mean? Um, so in fact, on this one, I have um, 20k uh, tiles. Uh, I have um, only to check on 2000, uh, and I remove something like 500. Yeah, on this example. Uh, okay, thanks everybody. We, I think our session is, has come to an end. It's time to prepare for the next session.